I think the economy is horrible, except the stock market's going up. And I think the stock market's going up because I'm leading Biden in all of the polls, every poll. We have a situation which I believe the stock market goes up because I'm leading. I think if I wasn't leading, the stock market would be 25% lower. And I think, frankly, if I didn't win, I think the stock market would crash. I'm making this video really, really short because what I've realized is thanks to, uh, you know, the YouTube algorithm, there's really no point in making these videos long when you talk about the stock market simply because they don't send out notifications for them. And on top of that, it's almost like nobody sees them. I, uh, in my community chat, I put up, there was two videos that I had made. And the sad thing is, I look at those videos, they got less than 3,000 views each. And in both of those videos, one was 10 months ago. It was called Bet on Chips. And I was telling everybody, buy NVIDIA, buy uh, Micron, buy Intel, and so forth and so on, buy AMD. 10 months ago. Those stocks shot up in ways that I never imagined that they could or would. And the sad thing is, I look at the video, the video only got like 1.6 thousand views or something. It was like less than 2,000, right? And um, when I think about like the money that I've made, a lot of other people could have benefited from that advice, but it was suppressed. It was suppressed advice because basically on YouTube, unless you're paying them money and you're a fake guru, unless you're either paying them or unless you're advertising, it's like they basically have silenced everybody's voices to where they want them to be. Now, one thing I've noticed, if you take a look at a lot of these YouTubers, these really, really big YouTubers, multi-millions of subscribers... They're struggling to get four and five hundred thousand views. Like I look at Valuetainment and I look at their view counts, and I'm thinking that that's all done on purpose. Mostly it's political, but when I really look at it, it's like that shouldn't even be possible. It's like if you've got multiple millions of subs, how is it possible that you're struggling just to get a hundred thousand views? Or if you have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. How are you struggling just to get 30 or 40,000 views? I don't blame the YouTubers themselves because I already see what's happening. This is, this is technological in nature. I remember when, you know, my favorite YouTubers would go live. I would see notifications pop up. I don't see any notifications pop up at all. I remember a long time ago, you used to be able to, at, in your videos, you used to be able to edit in your own uh, shortcuts where people could click those videos to go to a specific other video. You can't even do that anymore. So basically, the algorithm that they use manipulates the traffic and forces it in a specific direction. If I leave my computer running on autoplay, it's just going to go through whatever the presets they want it to go through are. And for the most part... You know, I don't really watch a lot of the stuff that they suggest unless I really want to. And for the most part, it just goes in whatever direction it goes in. It's really, really disgusting. It's really sad because you really think about it. You know, I, I remember when you had all of those those fakes, those fake gurus pushing Bitcoin, MSNBC, CNN. They were all fake news at this point. I remember when they were all pushing it. And the thing about it was they were all pushing this garbage they pumped the market up to like what was it, sixty eight thousand, and now yeah, Bitcoin right now is like forty eight thousand. But that means that anybody who bought in above fifty has lost a considerable amount of money. Anybody who bought in above sixty has lost even more of their money. And and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, what happened to all of the intelligent, you know backed by reality, you know, pushing of dividend paying stocks and, 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 and suggesting that people buy into specific companies that actually were worthwhile and actually had something going. And it's like, they've basically put it into that. It's like they pump what they want to pump and what they want to pump is garbage. And that's just what it is. So long story short, cause I ain't going to make this too long. I said, I'm not going to make this too long. Long story short, my portfolios are at their highest they've ever been. 
And what's amazing is I pulled out a lot of money because I purchased my uh, new car. And uh, I pulled out a lot. Well, I, it was two things. I purchased that car and I bought myself a vacation for Bali and Singapore business class on a and And um, my portfolios have gone right back to the value that they were before I pulled out the money because these stocks are just blowing up. Every single day, I've been getting these uh, reports that this news, this stock is at an all-time high. Every single day. And I've, I've posted those in my community chats like almost every time I get them. When I get like a chain of them, usually it's like 9.30 in the morning when the market opens up. Or it's like 4.30 by the time the market closes. But usually it's actually in the morning. So, um... If you looked at my video when I told you bet on chips, Microsoft was half of the value it is now. It's $420. Did I know it was going to go up this fast? No, I did not. But I knew that investing in Microsoft made sense. Now, NVIDIA has blown away all of my expectations. And I think what's sad is I read all of these articles that these people put out and they're just spitballing because, like, every single time NVIDIA, for example, hits their price target, they just raise the price target. I'm like, no, you guys don't understand what you're talking about, and you don't understand NVIDIA. See, these are not gamers. They don't understand what RTX GPUs are. These people don't really understand what AI is. It's like they just read what they're told to read, and they say what they're told to say. And I told you a long time ago, I was like, yo, you need to buy NVIDIA now. They're having a stock split. You need to buy it now. And sure enough, not only has it more than doubled in value, it's basically more than quadrupled in value from when I told you to buy into it. Then there's Apple. <coughs> I tried on that stupid uh, Vision Pro headset yesterday. And um, it was, I mean, it was nice as in... You know, you know, it's got the 8K resolution and you can look at pictures and videos. But it was weird because when they were showing, like, if you go and you try it on and you do the demo, it was kind of, I felt like I was Tom Cruise in Minority Report and I was high and I was obsessing over my dead son. That That's what it was like. It was like, I'm looking at family photos. Oh, yeah, don't you remember this? And it's like, I don't see any point in having this thing. And then it can't connect directly to a Windows computer, so you can't use it on my video games like DCS World. I can't use it for flight simulators the same way I use my Oculus Quest 2. And now they got a new one of those. They got the Meta 3, and the Meta 3 is only like $400. That Vision Pro with tax is like $4,000-something. It's even more than $4,000, like $4,200. I'm like, this thing doesn't make any sense. Now... Apple's stock is going to go up, but it's probably going to happen as we move towards the, um, how should I say, the uh, holiday shopping season this year. Because obviously they're going to have new Apple Watches, obviously they're going to have new iPhones, obviously they'll probably have new iPads. It, it, you know, they, with, with the exception of this Vision Pro, they really don't have anything else except incremental improvements. So, yeah, I, I know the stock is going to go back up. It'll probably pass through the $200 mark even before then. But um, all that remains to be seen. Google and Amazon, I was telling you to buy those prior to the stock split. Unfortunately, right after the stock split, Russia invaded Ukraine. And now, this was a while ago because this was like, uh, this was basically two years ago. Um... Now, Google and Amazon are at all-time highs. Had you not been able to buy the split when it happened and you got the either one when they dropped under $100, oh, yeah, you're sitting really pretty right now. But uh, if you did buy that stock split, you'd, you'd be sitting on gains at this point because right now they're at all-time highs. Um, Tesla is $193. I've told people, listen, you're a fool to bet against Tesla because right now Tesla has the, the best charging network there is. They're second to none. They're about to open this network open to the public. You're just going to need an adapter to use your car on it. 
And uh, they're charging between 48 cents and 60 cents a kilowatt hour. So they're they're char- they're going to make so much money off of that charging network simply because of its reliability. And um, I, I'm like, yo, listen, you can't you can't bet against them. It's like their stock has always been on a roller coaster for a ro- long time, but betting against them is a fool's gambit. So I'm not worried about where they are right now. They're just seven dollars under two hundred bucks, but uh, they'll be back. They'll be right back. And if you bought in pre-split before they did the first split, you're still up. So you know you could, you didn't lose anything. In fact, you, you're still up. It may be down a little bit in the portfolio, but you're still up. Um, AMD is $172. Now, for people who missed out on NVIDIA and couldn't get into NVIDIA back when I told them to, you can still get AMD. You can still get Intel. You can still get Micron. You can still get Taiwan Semiconductor, TSM. Uh, SCMI Supercomputers... um, they're kind of really expensive, and uh, they're basically more expensive per share than uh, NVIDIA is. So my recommendation is, like, yeah, go after something you can actually afford that still has its upward trajectory. Micron, they're building a factory in Troy, New York. Um, They're trying to uh, hedge the possibility of China trying to take over Taiwan. So uh, for the most part, yeah, that's absolutely worth investing in. Uh, what else? Um, General Motors is right now $38. That's up from 33 General Motors is worth investing in. They do pay a dividend. You also have to remember General Motors is involved with artificial intelligence and they're involved with electric vehicles. Regardless what these idiots in the media have said... Um, you know, as they attack Elon Musk, the simple fact is electric vehicles have had a record year and they're still doing very well. The uh, Tesla Model 3 refresh is selling. Uh, the Tesla Model Y refresh is coming. The Tesla Model 2 is right around the corner. They'll probably have that uh, uh, previewed. They'll probably show you what it's going to look like probably before the end of this year since we still have months left for the year. So I'm not I'm not worried about them. Uh Ford and Stellantis. Uh Stellantis right now, uh the shares are twenty four dollars and forty one cents each. Uh Ford is slightly down because I, I think they're really screwed up over there. Like I, I don't know if they need new leadership or if they just need to get their act together. But the bottom line is um the V eight engine is pretty much dead. And they're moving ahead with electrification. So right now, everything they have is those twin turbo V6 EcoBoost or some kind of turbocharged EcoBoost, whatever you get. Uh, Stellantis is way behind the curb, but they're playing catch up and they're trying. It looks like what Stellantis is doing. When you see them ripping everybody off on these played out Chargers and Challengers and these played out uh, Hemi cars at this point. It looks what they're trying to do, like what they're trying to do, it seems to be, is that they're going to become a low volume sales, but high price tag seller. So they'll sell fewer cars at a higher price in order to make up for what they lose in sales. And it looks like that's where they're going because they've got everything marked up ridiculously. Like everything is, the, the MSRPs on everything is is just higher than it should be. So they have, what is it, the uh, Wagoneer S coming in order to replace the Jeep Grand Cherokee, which I I just don't believe that that's going to work well. I I really don't believe that Dodge is going to do well with electrification. I think they're going to lose their core audience. Um, I think they already have lost their core audience, but I I think they're going to lose the core audience. And um, I I don't think that they're going to do well with electrification. There's too many other companies making cars that are better in quality. And without those Hemis and those V8 engines, it's like they just don't have anything special to offer. It's like even the design of the cars, making retro-looking electric cars, it's like I, I just don't see that working. 
The core audience doesn't want that. And I just don't think that's going to work. Not for them. Uh, Ford tried it with the uh, Mustang Mach-E. And they've gotten some sales. But the problem is they have to slash prices. And they have to offer severe discounts just to move those cars. So I, I just don't uh, I don't see it working for Dodge. I just don't see it working for them. Um, other than that, I think the only other thing worth talking about here is the fact that regardless where the banks are, buying into the banks makes all the sense right now, especially if their shares have been cut down. Right now, you see oil prices are down. We are in winter. We're in the middle of winter. But you can bet that oil is going to go right back up simply because of Biden's wars in the Middle East. So all it's going to take is one attack or a terrorist attack or something to happen, and you're going to see the prices spike again. So if you think gas prices are going to stay low, you're out of your mind. It's not going to happen. I, I was saying that back in 2020. When uh, gas was negative, oil was negative, and gas prices were at their lowest. I was like, no, if y'all think it's going to stay like this, you're out of your minds. Sure enough, when Russia invaded Ukraine, that's when I started selling because we, our stocks had hit, what, all-time highs in all of these oil stocks. So I'm not worried about those. Gas and oil, you can bet on because that's basically energy, and once you're in the energy sector, it's all dividends. It's like you need to build yourself a dividend point. You know, a dividend-paying portfolio that's going to pay you over a long period of time. But most people, they, they, they're into fast money. They think that they're just going to get in and make millions of dollars overnight, and they think they're just going to jump out with millions of dollars. It's like, guys, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen at all. But um, as you can see, most of these banks are on sale. Um, I personally think if you don't want the banks, you absolutely should buy the credit cards instead. Visa, MasterCard, American Express. Right now, Americans are carrying more credit card debt than ever before. And that is reflected in their values. This is American Express. I got a message that my American Express stocks had hit an all-time high. As you can see, they're at an all-time high. And then there's MasterCard, all-time high. And then you can see Visa, all-time high. How many times must I say it? Americans are carrying more credit card debt than ever before. So these values make all the sense in the world, simply because Americans are addicted to using their credit cards at this point. So other than that, there's the gas uh, distribution companies, uh, you know, BP, Shell, Chevron, Valero, Sunoco. All of the ones that are down, if you had the money, honestly... It's like, if you could afford it, yeah, I'd buy them. But right now, you're probably off better focused on the banks. See, if you didn't get in to oil when I told you about it in 2020, if you didn't get in when oil went negative, chances are it's so high right now that you might not be able to afford it. You're probably better off just investing in the banks. So um, other than that, I really can't really think of anything else that's worth talking about here. I mean, um, EVgo and ChargePoint, as you can see, those are electric vehicle stocks based around the chargers. And uh, EVgo sucks as a network. ChargePoint's only a little bit better, but EVgo sucks. So um, the only thing else I'll just add to this video is my uh, suggestion list for people who are trying to buy affordable stocks in order to build up a dividend paying portfolio okay so here it is as simply as possible um as you can see micron is 85 dollars now i was telling you about that long 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 ago along with amd back when it was only like 50 dollars. this tsm 132 dollars, which is up from 100 because it was under 100 like i think it was about a month ago then there's Visa, MasterCard, and American Express, as I already suggested. Uh, ASML and SCMI are probably way too expensive for you to afford them. Furthermore, when they're that high, I mean, there's so many cheaper things to go after. But then there's Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and Walmart. Now, Walmart is actually worth talking about because I don't know if you know this, but Walmart is about to have a stock split. So... Walmart's split is supposed to be, I believe, on February 28th. 
I believe the day after February 28th, when you wake up, you'll have noticed that the uh, stock has split. So if you don't already own Walmart, this might be a decent time to buy Walmart. But um, I guess the last thing I'll say is, you know, with, when you've got people trying to take credit for the uh, stock market, I think it's important to remember that the Dow is based on the values of a handful of companies. And if you really think about it, the vast majority of the companies that are on the Dow now are all trillion dollar companies. So you got Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Google, Amazon, Tesla. Um, uh, uh, for the most part, those stocks are a trillion or more. Like Microsoft is three trillion. I believe Apple is around three trillion, give or take. NVIDIA is a trillion. So yeah, it's really easy for the Dow to look like it's doing really well, to which point I would say that the Wall Street does not necessarily tell you how Main Street is doing. The average person can't afford a car. The average person can't afford a house. The interest rates are still high enough where it basically makes it so that uh, most things are very, very difficult for most people to afford. Uh, shopping is more expensive. You know, I, I went shopping earlier today and I got a, a, a dozen of eggs. And yeah, I could have gone to like Key Food or I could have gone to like BJ's or Costco or something. I haven't bought eggs in a long time. The thing of eggs was $4.96. And I was like, wait a minute. I thought the time of eggs being overpriced, I thought that was over. Because I haven't bought eggs in a really long time. And when I say a long time, I'm talking about like months can go by and I don't buy eggs. I only really buy them if I plan on making something. And uh, it was like $4.96. And I'm like, what? And and then on the shelf, they said that that was a dollar off. They said they were actually $5.96, but uh, you were saving a dollar. And I asked a woman online, I was like, is it just me or did eggs go up? And she was like, no, it's not just you. It's, they, that's how they are. They're really high. So my thing is, it's like when you have food that's this high and you have housing that's this unaffordable and you have uh, automobiles that are this unaffordable, you know, my question is, how well is that economy really doing? You know, I don't think that's doing very well at all. You know, I mean, yeah, you know, the those of us in the stock market, those of us with big portfolios that we can brag about, yeah, we can talk about how great everything's going. But if you don't have that, chances are uh, you're not uh, you're not celebrating right now. That's what it looks like to me. So that's all I have to say. Chances are this video is not even going to get that many views. So, you know, I'm just going to end it here because there's really no point in even talking about this stuff anymore. African Americans built this nation. We built this nation. You know, you're just starting to get real credit for that. Okay, I don't know if you know that. You're just starting to get, you built the nation. We all built it, but you were such a massive part of it. Bigger than you were given credit for. Does that make sense? Right? But through generations of blood, sweat, and tears, and you deserve a government that defends your interests, protects your families, and cares for our own citizens first. My administration is fighting with everyone and all our heart to reverse the pain inflicted by Democrat leaders and to deliver hope and opportunity and prosperity for all Americans, but for African-American communities all throughout our land. And our agenda is lifting up citizens of every background, race, religion, color, and creed. But while we are fighting every day to build up our nation, the far left only wants to wreck, ruin, and destroy our nation. To be continued.